talk to you about scrappy projects. Um, we as knitters always end up with scrap yarn. Um, <laughs> there's, well, occasionally you might play yarn chicken. Let's face it, more often than not, what you end up with are leftovers because the project um, doesn't use the, all of that last skein of yarn. Um, and if you're like me, those scraps just tend to gather dust. I never know what to do with them. And it can be disappointing because some of those yarns are really nice yarns that you, you just don't have enough left for a full thing, but you have enough left to do something with. You're just not sure what. So I wanted to make um, a video to share with you guys some patterns I found um, that I think would um, be good choices for your scrap yarn. Um, and also add a couple of tips on how to make your scrap yarn projects not look chaotic. Um, so for starters, any project really could be a scrap yarn project, um, but it really kind of depends on your vibe. So my personal vibe is not kind of wacky, colorful art teacher. Um, I don't like projects that are full of bright to spare it colors, it looks too chaotic for me. If you like that, that is great. Um, but for me personally, that is not my vibe. So I'm looking for projects that are using multiple colors, um, are able to use up scraps, you know, 25 yards here, 50 yards there, leftover from other projects, but aren't looking all kinds of crazy. So let's start with some of my tips for um, making your scrappy projects not chaotic, um, if that's something you're interested in. So the first one is, while the whole point of scrappy projects is, be, is to be using up yarn, um, leftover yarn from projects, um, that's not to say you should just use you know any yarn. Um, it's a good idea to create some kind of palette. So whether that's all blues, or all neutral colors, or all warm colors, some kind of connection between your colors that's going to add some cohesiveness to your project. Um, so that might mean that you have to put a little bit more work into it, collecting uh, yarns that are appropriate and that you have enough of for whatever your project might be, it might take you a little bit longer to kind of gather, especially if you're a newer knitter um, or you don't keep a big stash. <laughs> um, it might take you a little bit longer to, to amass enough leftovers in kind of the same color family and of course weight. Um, but you know, get a nice storage bin with um, um, kind of that like rubber seal around the edge so you don't get any you know, bugs and things in there and just throw your yarn in there. Um, it can be helpful to keep track of what your yarn was, you know, what, what weight it was, um, what fiber content it was, if that's something that you're not going to remember on your own. Um, so maybe you want to stick a little label in there, make notes on your Ravelry, um, things like that. But take the time to assemble yarns in some kind of color palette. Um, Secondly, I'm sorry, it's it's a nice day. Well, it's not a great day. It's kind of cloudy, but it is warm and the windows are open and a lot of the neighbors obviously need to do um, yard work. Um, secondly, again, even though we are using scrap yarn, consider using one main color to kind of unify your project, whether um, that's a color that matches one of your you know scrap yarns or maybe you get a, like a neutral a black or a white just to kind of bring things together um, having one main color that is repeating throughout your project can really help um, give it some cohesiveness um, when you're bringing in all of these different colors and a few of the projects the patterns i'm going to show you are definitely um, using that that method third I really recommend keeping your scrappy projects for accessories and not sweaters. Um, again, unless that's your vibe, because if you have a sweater that's just full of a bajillion colors, um, it gets really hard to coordinate with the rest of your clothing. Um, that's not a rule across the board. Um, I am gonna show you uh, one sweater that I think would be nice 
using your scrap yarn, but it does have sort of that unifying main color use throughout. Um, but in general, especially the more chaotic your project is, um, the better idea it is to keep, um, to use it as an accessory and not a main, a center, center focal piece of your, of your outfit because um, it just makes coordination really hard if you've got a bajillion million colors, um, which, but it's much easier to do if you just, you know, you got kind of a wacky hat or, you know, especially really fun um, wacky socks. Uh, and then lastly, while you're, the more chaotic your colors are, the simpler your stitch patterns should be. So if you've already got a lot of color stuff going on, maybe it's not also the time for cables or really intricate lace. Um, stitch patterns I do recommend that aren't just plain stockinette or garter stitch, although that's, you know, certainly fine if you want to do the stripes. Um, slip stitch patterns that carry one yarn over another, especially when you are using a main color yarn, um, can really be a nice way to add some interest to your project, to keep you interested in knitting it, um, but to keep the colors from interfering with the stitch patterns. It tends to work very well. Um, having one color you know, work over the other color um, you get some visual interest from the the pattern that it's created, but it's still it, you're, you're, it's still visible. You know, you're not. It's not just like a insane cacophony of colors and stitches, and and not even able to interpret what you're actually looking at. Um, so, generally speaking, you kind of want to keep your stitching simple. Um, when you are working with multiple colors. All right, so those are my tips for um, kind of dialing down the chaos of your scrappy projects. And now I'm gonna show you guys eight patterns that I think would be great for your leftover yarn. So um, again, what I'm talking about here are not necessarily small projects um, to use small bits of yarn, but projects that are using multiple colors of yarn so that you can use, combine a bunch of your scraps that are generally speaking too small for, for any one project together. And I will be um, popping photos in here as we speak. And all of the details, you know, pattern names and designer names and links uh, to Ravelry will be in the description box down below. So this first one actually is a relatively small project, and this is the Scrappy Scrunchie. So if you have long hair, no doubt you love a good scrunchie. Um, and this is just a really clever way to bring together um, a bunch of colors and make them look great together. So this case you are using, uh, she has two variations. So this again, it's called the Scrappy Scrunchie. It is by Megan Garland. It is $2 um, and it uses worsted weight yarn. Um, so the total yardage for a, a scrunchie is only 90 yards. Um, and she has slightly scrappy <laughs> and super scrappy. So slightly scrappy combines a solid with, a, with your scrap yarn to make it a little bit more cohesive, as I was saying. And super scrappy uh, is just all, all scraps and it looks a little more chaotic, um, but it's a scrunchie, so it doesn't matter that much. Um, so it looks like it does involve a color work chart. You will be knitting in the round. Um, I'm gonna click on the webpage because it says, there may be a free version on her blog. Let's see. Yes, so you can get an ad-free <laughs> version uh, for $2 or you can hop over to her blog if you feel like navigating a blog um, and uh, knit it for free. You know, it's two bucks. Give her some, give her some, some pocket money. Let's see. So as I said, the total yardage is about 90 yards. You're gonna need a US nine needle and a hair tie to presumably put in the middle of the scrunchie to make it scrunch. And she provides a color work chart for you. Um, it is very simple. It is, even if you've never done uh, color work before, it's not no long repeats. It's a very simple color work chart. Um, 
So definitely that's something you could tackle. I just think this is a really cute project. Um, it does call for worsted weight yarn. You could probably hold two uh, strands of fingering weight as I feel like fingering weight tends to be what a lot of us have left over because unless your feet are very large, um, uh, socks don't require a full skein of yarn. So this is a really cute, it's gonna be a fast project. It would be really nice for gifts. Just overall, love this one. Just a real cute, quick, uh, way to use up some small bits of yarn. Oh, and there are a bunch of examples and they all turned out really cute, so. Adorable. So as I said, that actually is a very small project, but some of the rest of these are um, a little bit larger. All right, so let's jump in to the hats. As I said, there are three of them. Um, this one is probably the most well-known, although you might know the sweater, which would also perhaps be a good choice. The sweater for me is a little chaotic. Um, for you, it might be fine. So this is the sea glass hat. This is a pattern by Wool and Pines. So they also have a sea glass sweater. Um, it uses fingering weight yarn. The pattern includes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hat sizes. So it's sized for the whole family, newborn to uh, adult large. Uh, and it is free. So it is a simple one by one color work, kind of like the uh, scrappy scrunchie that we just saw. Um, and to get it, you just have to sign up for their newsletter. The total yardage is, no, it doesn't say a total yardage, it says a total weight. So you're going to need 22 to 44 grams of fingering weight yarn. A uh, full skein of fingering, fingering weight yarn is about 100 grams usually. So a quarter to less than a half of a skein of fingering weight yarn. It includes a bunch of video tutorials, including choosing your colors, swatching for gauge, um, how to do color work English style and magic knot, which I believe is a way to join your yarn. So, Yes, discover the simplicity of one by one color work that allows for playful color mixing without the hassle of weaving in ends. You're gonna use fingering scraps, mix and match. It looks like you probably could if you really wanted to incorporate a single main color to make this a little bit more cohesive. Um, but I do think if you kind of settle on like a color palette, like some, you know, you know reds and oranges and browns or blues and purples and pinks, um, it's gonna give it um, a cohesive look that way. And it is knit in the traditional hat style, so from the brim up to the crown. So a couple other samples have, you know, like a solid color being used for the brim. You can add a pom-pom. Um, so it looks like overall, just a really flexible pattern, a really simple color work, you know, one by one. Um, and a great way to use up scraps of your fingering weight yarn left over from your socks. And the baby in the, in the picture is just really cute. So there are 826 projects of this. So if you wanna see examples of how other people have done it, there are plenty on Ravelry to check out. Um, and again, it's free. You have to uh, just sign up for their newsletter. Um, so as I said, they have, they also have a sea glass tee and a sea glass sweater. Um, for me, those are a bit too much, but I do think that the hat is really adorable. And again, with eight sizes, this is another thing that maybe is going to make a really nice gift. Um, and you could, you know, make a whole bunch of them and they would end up looking so different because you've used all the colors. Um, and then, you know, gift them to everybody for Christmas. So, sea glass hat by Wool and Pine. All right, this next hat, <laughs> this is interesting. So it's called the Hidden Scraps Beanie, uh, and it uses fingering weight yarn held double. And it is worked in such a way that when you fold up the brim, you are covering up one chunk of fabric and you can use anything there any color you know it's chaotic you just you need some yarn but it's 
you can't figure out what to do with it, it's going to be covered up when you fold up the hat. Um, so I think that's really creative. So the Hidden Scraps Beanie is a warm and cozy ribbed hat. This hat is made from fingering weight yarn held double for a deliciously dense fabric and the double folded brim is triple thick for extra warm. This design was created to make the most out of single skeins. All sizes can be knit from 100 grams or less. Scrap yarn is cleverly hidden away to become invisible when worn. So this is not um, the situation as the other ones where you're kind of mixing colors. This is, oh gosh, I've got this random bit of yarn. I don't know what to do with this. It doesn't match anything. It's still enough to use. Oh, hide it in this hat. Still gonna give you warmth, still gonna make a hat, but it's gonna be completely hidden once you fold up the brim. Um, and it's also interesting because since you're holding fingering weight yarn double, you can um, mix a couple of colors there as well from your scrap bin, from your leftovers from socks bin. Uh, so this is only $4.50 and it includes one, two, three, four, five sizes. So from baby to adult large, uh, and it's worked on US four needles. Um, you need up to a hundred grams of your fingering weight main color, but again, that's being held double. Um, and so you may have 50 and 50 and then um, somewhere between 40 and 70 grams of that scrap yarn that's gonna be hidden inside. And then she has um, a really nice main sample. Uh, the designer is Haley Carter and her, her sample uses um, some really nice colors of, of hedgehog fiber sock yarn. They look really cute together. So a little different from the other things I am suggesting here, but a really unique way to, <laughs> to sneak some scrap yarn into a project where it will never be seen but it will still keep you nice and warm. So again, Hidden Scraps Beanie, Haley Carter. And then the last hat is called the Scrappy Cappy. It's a pattern by Amy Gunderson. Um, it uses fingering weight yarn. And let's see what it says. Do you have lots of fingering weight scraps left over and can't bear to throw them out? Small bits that just aren't enough for a full project. This is the perfect project to use up all those odds and ends. This hat is modular, requiring no seaming and very few ends to weave in. Most ends are knit in as you go. A photo tutorial is provided for the modular bits. Um, so this is something where I do think you're gonna want some kind of color palette, otherwise it really will be chaotic. But as you can see, You've got you know small sections of each color here and there. They all come together in the end um, to make a cohesive cap. You can use um, perhaps a, a single, a solid color for your brim to add to that um, the cohesiveness of the design. And you get the fun of playing with modular knitting, which I have not done a lot of. So this is specifically for your bits of scrap yarn. Uh, it is six whole dollars. So uh, very uh, reasonably priced. And it looks like these little sections are in a garter stitch, which makes it even easier. I can really see this like, again, either coming up with a color palette or picking a main color to do like half of the, the modular sections in and then mixing up the colors for the other half. She does include some color notes. It says, I tried a few different color arrangements in the three samples, two, uh, two were tonal. And in those examples, she separated her colors into light and dark piles and alternated them. So another smart idea, alternating light and dark. Um, in the third sample, she used um, black all throughout for the dark colors and then lots of different colors for the light colors. So it says this hat is worked modularly and there is no seaming. Strips are made and added to previously knit strips as you go and it includes a tutorial. Colors are changed using the intarsia method so if you haven't done that before that might be something you need to to practice a little bit with. 
Um, only two colors are used at a time, so it's easy to manage your yarn. The only downfall of this one is there is only one size included. You could probably um, adjust that by using um, heavier yarn. So it's, it's written for fingering weight, but if you used heavier yarn, you get a bigger hat. Uh, but the size included is an adult medium. So, so again, that is the Scrappy Cappy by Amy Gunderson. All right, those are all the hats. Let's take a peek at a sock pattern. Now, obviously socks, it's really easy to, to knit scrappy socks. You just get all of your sock, sock yarn and make some striped socks, like self-striping socks, but the, without the self part, you have to put the effort into the striping. Um, but I did want to share one pattern. Um, if you just, you know, like to have something a little bit more interesting than stripes um, and you like using patterns you don't like to just kind of wing it so these are the scrappy lines socks this is a pattern by pian rogavin i'm sure that i pronounced that wrong um it is available on ravelry for four dollars and 45 cents obviously it uses fingering weight yarn um and you are alternating your scraps with um a main color and you want to make sure those two contrast really well and then you get these like pops of color in the lines of the socks you could also reverse it um, and use um, a solid for the lines and use scrap yarns in the background either way um, so it is a cuff down sock uh, with a kind of basic heel flap easy peasy uh, if you're assuming you have knit socks before if you have not you probably want to learn that first. Um, and the pattern includes, how many sizes? Um, it says US sizes five and a half to 10 and a half, but it doesn't say exactly how many in there, but that's gonna cover, you know, kind of most feet. <laughs> and it says for the base of the socks, you can use any fingering sock yarn you like. Uh, and for the scrappy lines, dive in with your stash of leftover yarn. So she has a couple of different examples here. Um, if kind of texture on socks bothers you, this is maybe not the pattern for you. Uh, but if you're looking for something a little more interesting in terms of a scrappy sock that's not just stripes, I think this is a, a nice choice. So again, these are the Scrappy Lines socks by a person whose name I'm gonna put in the description box down below and not attempt to pronounce again. All right, let's take a look at a sweater. And as I said, for me personally, I think most multicolored sweaters or scrappy sweaters are just too much. But this particular one is the Caro sweater by Liv Ulven uh, that uses a fingering and a lace weight held together to give you a DK weight and includes two elements that I had talked about in my tips for scrappy projects, which is using a main color to alternate with multiple contrast colors and using slip stitches. So it says the Caro sweater is a classic raglan style sweater featuring slip stitch color work stripes that mimic a woven texture. The standout feature of the design is its color work stripes created using a slip stitch technique that involves using the contrast color without actually knitting it after every two rounds or rows worked in the main color. So most of the samples here are shown in two colors, um, not two colors, two yarns. So one yarn being a kind of a solid and the other being a variegated, but you could easily, instead of using a single variegated yarn, sub in your scrap yarns. Again, you're probably gonna want some kind of palette to give it a little bit more cohesiveness so it's not just um, a chaotic swirl of color, but definitely this is something where you could put in your uh, your scrap yarn and it is knit from the bottom up it includes nine sizes um, as it says the recommended yarn is the um, wool dreamers manchalope um, which comes in a lot of nice neutral shades which is probably um, one of the reasons this looks so neat and tidy so there are 17 sample projects which is not a ton there are uh, a number of people here who used other yarns, not the Manchalopes. I think this is a really nice way to sort of combine um, 
that sort of combines a couple of the elements I talked about in giving you a sweater that is, could use up scrap yarn but still be cohesive. You may have to, and this is of course what swatching is for, play around a little bit with your colors and see how it's going to turn out. Um, again, you probably want to use a single main color, um, but you can really bust through some scraps with that contrast color element. So this again is the Caro sweater by Liv Olven, and it is available for $9.46. All right, next project I'm gonna talk about is a blanket. I am not a big blanket knitter. I did recently do a video, no, it's switched, it's over here now, <laughs> um, about some blanket patterns that I would be interested in trying. Would I personally knit this blanket? No, I would never finish this, but it looks really nice and it's a, it's a nice way to, to use up some scraps. So this is the Painting Honeycombs Blanket. This is a pattern by Stephen West. It uses a DK weight yarn. And as you can see, again, we've got a main color here that is kind of weaving over top of a variety of contrast colors. So you get your one main color, you pull in your yarn scraps for all of these contrast colors. It says this blanket is filled with color opportunities. As you knit the small baby size blanket or large blanket for your couch, one color DK weight yarn frames several color pops. The baby blanket features five color pops and the large size features eight with a slip stitch technique. And of course you can use as many or as few colors as you like. So it does come in two sizes, you've got a baby blanket and a large size uh, throw blanket. It is DK weight yarn. So if you wanted to use exactly eight colors, you would need 225 yards of each. And, and they do repeat. So you don't have to do that. You could, could just use a bajillion colors, um, as many as you wanted. And if you bring in this solid main color, um, especially because this is a blanket where you're not trying to you know, coordinate with your clothes or anything, you can be as, you know, controlled chaos. <laughs> we can use as many colors as you want. Uh, okay, so all of the main color stuff that you're seeing is done in garter stitch. And then the uh, contrast colors that are in the background are a stockinette stitch. So you've got contrasting colors and you also have contrasting textures. Um, I just think this looks really cute if you are in the market for a blanket project. Um, again, maybe, you know, having some kind of palette instead of just total chaos, might help make this a little bit more unifying for your home. Um, but since you don't have to coordinate this with your clothes or anything, I think it's um, maybe a nice opportunity to be a little bit more experimental color with color than you might normally be. Um, so you can buy his whole book, Painting Honeycombs, for uh, $33, which includes 11 patterns, or you can just buy this pattern for $7.79 on Ravelry. Again, this is Painting Honeycombs Blanket, Stephen West. All right, and then the last project I'm gonna show you is a shawl, and it is mine. So this is the Ticket to Anywhere shawl. I am sorry, I don't actually have it here to show you. Uh, it is with the, uh, the, the yarn companies that I designed this for a couple of years ago. So I published this in uh, back in June, 2020 for Fiber Art Studio Tour, um, which were are um, three or four yarn studios here in Maryland that have uh, an event um, where you can visit their studios. And, and um, they specifically wanted a shawl designed for mini skeins. Mini skeins is basically the same thing as leftover yarn. <laughs> so, so as I call it, so this is called Ticket to Anywhere. It uses fingering weight yarn. And as I said, it was specifically designed for mini skeins. You could definitely instead pull in one main color to combine with leftovers. But I also designed it so that the mini skeins would kind of fade into each other and still can, had this kind of cohesive look. Um, even though the colors themselves are rather, you know, it goes everything from brown to bright green. There's some grays in here. Um, but each section of stitch patterns, and it's a lot of slip stitch patterns in here, each section is to blend into the next section. So you still get a sense of cohesiveness, even with lots of colors. Uh, so overall, this uses about a thousand yards. Uh, so when I made this, I used six 100 yard mini skeins that were in neutral shades and four 100 yard mini skeins that were in bright colors. You can do, you know, whatever you want. Uh, as I said, if you wanted to do 
um, one main color, you would need about 600 yards of that. Um, you could use two kind of very similar main colors and then add in these pops of color. A lot of opportunities to, to play with color here and still get um, a, a, a pretty cohesive looking shawl in the end. Uh, it is worked on a US 5. It has some, you do need to be able to read charts because it has a whole bunch of kind of uh, different stitch patterns. And again, a lot of them are um, slip stitch patterns. So you're carrying one color over the other, which is giving it this dimension and helping to help everything kind of fade into each other. Um, but because there are so many, everything is charted, but it is broken up into smaller charts, not like one giant chart. Um, and this is available on Ravelry or Payhip for nine bucks. Um, as I said, unfortunately, I don't have this. <laughs> it is still, if you go to Maryland Sheep and Wool, you may find this hanging um, in a booth at Avalon Springs Farms. Um, she usually vends at Maryland Sheep and Wool, so she may be the one that still has this and you may get to take a peek at it there if you're looking for it. Um, but great project for leftover sock yarns. So again, ticket to anywhere. All right, so those are my suggestions for you. If you are looking for scrap yarn patterns that use lots of colors, but are not chaotic. If you decide to knit any of them, please let me know. I would love to hear about how your project went. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. I hope you found it useful and informative. Um, if you did, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. New videos about knitting every Saturday. If you're looking for me on social media, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Mayday Peruana, and I will see you next time.